going to plant some plants in water today and I thought I'd bring you guys along with me. I've already been to the gym this morning. I had a little upper body session. So it's a little bit of a mix of like chest and back. And in case anyone was wondering, the activewear set I was wearing, the pants are from Alphaly, but I would not recommend. Um, <laughs> I've had two pairs break on me. Like the first pair was a small and they broke. So I was like, maybe I need a medium and I got a medium and they also broke. Um, don't recommend. But the bra I was wearing is actually from the sustainability collection from Muscle Nation, which has been really great. So it's made from recycled materials and I got a few of the sports bras in that set. And I really like it because, well, you can see all the back tattoos while I'm training. Also, I didn't feel like wearing any makeup this morning. It's a Saturday morning. Um, I'm going out for dinner with other Rachel, Erin, and Darren tonight. And so because I have to put makeup on later, I didn't want to put it on now and have it sitting on my face all day and getting all like crusty and nasty. So we're just going makeup free. I hope you don't mind. We're all friends here, I think. So I wanted to share some plants that are just really easy to keep living in water. I have just too many. I've actually started giving away plants. I even took one to my hair salon the other day and I was like, here, take this. There's too many cuttings. Like it's just getting excessive now. And like, look at these ones. They have attached themselves. I really, if anyone knows a clean way to get them off, like granted, I shouldn't have let it grown up the, grow up the wall, but it kind of took off. This one, I was gonna say it's not stuck to the wall, but it is now, oh dear. So there's those. And then in the lounge room, hang on. The Rapidophora tetrasperma. Crazy, crazy. And then my Adansonii. Oh, and this, it's just getting full Jumanji in here. So in my office on the shelves, so if my computer is here, the shelves are here. I've got a couple of plants. There's water in there. Also water in this one, water in this one. I'm gonna take some cuttings of some of my favorite ones to live in water. I've also got some other plants which are in soil, which I'm just gonna convert over to water as well. I know there's semi-hydro where you can use uh, liquor, but that just seems like a whole hassle for me. And I do like the look of the roots just growing fully in water. I think that's pretty cool. So let's take some cuttings so that they have enough time to sort of callous off a little bit before we transfer them into the water. cinnamon I like to use this to help callus the cuttings a little bit quicker you really you don't need much this first one is very obvious and I feel like I talk about it in every plant video and that's pothos okay aka devil's ivy I'm just gonna see these stems I'm just gonna take off the first like two leaves this is the end that I cut from I'm just gonna pull off these leaves so they don't rot in the water they're very easy to propagate. You would have very bad luck to make a mistake with these. There was a node here as well, and we just sort of cut in between because it will grow out of these nodes here. But where I cut, I'm just gonna dip that into some cinnamon. All you really need to do to get these to grow is just plunk them in water and then they'll grow. But you'll need to make sure that you are giving them just a little bit of fertilizer every now and again, like not that often but enough to give the plant nutrients because planting them in soil gives them nutrients and planting them in water does not. I'll show you what I use towards the end of the video just so that you can get an idea. Okay, next up we have a Hartley Philodendron. I'm hoping that's in focus because I've got you guys on manual focus right now. And also check my very non-aesthetic bucket. So I did want to film it outside. This morning it was like really sunny and it was gorgeous. Um, and now it's rainy and super windy. The little bit of rain I can deal with, but the wind is so loud. So we're inside with a bucket and a heap of dirt. 
As I was saying, anyway, this is the Hartley Philodendron. I have a whole bunch of them. This one I actually grew from a cutting. Oh, the dogs are coming to join us. But this one I actually grew from a cutting. I've just shaken off a bunch of the soil and what I'm going to do now is take my very beautiful lime green bucket and I'm actually going to use the water in here just to wash off the rest of the soil. This is probably one of the easiest ones to grow in water alongside with pothos. You could also use this as just like a cutting. So if you've already got one of these plants, just take a little cutting between the nodes. Um, similar to what we just did with the pothos, but because this one's already been in soil, like I said, I've already shaken off a lot of the soil. I'm just gonna wash off the last of it here. I think this looks so pretty here, although I'm not sure how long I will keep it here because our coffee table actually has wheels. So things get moved around a bit. But I thought it would look really nice on this tray that we have on our coffee table. So the tray itself is from the brand Zakia. The plant is just in one of my random mason jars. This little dish, it's actually a dip bowl, like just part of our tableware. I thought it would look cute on the tray. And this room spray is so amazing. I love the smell of it. I don't like anything that is like too floral or too feminine, too dainty and light. I prefer scents that are, you know, more woody, dark, smoky, uh, that sort of vibe. And this one is so nice. It's got a mixture of like bamboo, cedarwood, sandalwood, leather. So Now I have to give an honorable little mention to the moss ball. Look how cute it is. It just lives in this glass of water. That's all it does. It just reminds me of like a green meatball. It's easy to care for, just give it fresh water and it seems to like bright light. I tend to keep mine on a little windowsill over there. Trigscantia tricolor. I feel like I always say that wrong, so don't come for me if I, I didn't say it correctly. I just use plants as a hobby. I'm no expert. This is the only one that I haven't tried in water, but I've done some reading and apparently it does pretty well in water. For how long, I'm not sure, but everything was saying, especially if you take a cutting, it will sprout roots really, really quickly. Like within 24 hours, it starts to sprout roots. But I had two of these growing in soil, one of which was in my office. I just wanted to take this one out of the soil and try it in water. Look, for how much plant this is, that's the roots. I've got another one floating around. Today is probably not the best day to give an example of where I've put this. So this is in my office, which doesn't really receive much direct sunlight at all. And it looks pretty dark and dim in here at the moment, just because it is raining and it's overcast. I've got one big one here, and then I put a little, look at this, a little babu, a little baby. So it's just here with my pothos and care tips are pretty easy for this one. Just making sure it's getting enough indirect light throughout the day. Um, if it starts to get leggy, like I've got one back here, you can see it started to get a bit leggy, like if the leaves were growing a bit further apart. When I originally set that one up, see that is how long it is now. It was much further away from the window. So I just moved it a bit closer. These ones I might move, we'll see how they go. Then we 
we have a peace lily. This one of mine has been living in water already. Oh, it's kind of empty now. I need to refill it. But it's been living in water for ages. I'm just going to go around. I, I would do this to any plant, not just a plant that's living in water. I'm just checking if there's any old leaves that are spent and used up like this. See? But other than that, this one looks happier than the one that I have that's in soil. I found with the peace lilies, you do need to clean their leaves a little bit more than some other plants just because they are so big and they can catch a lot. I've got my little jar here. I'm just gonna pop my, actually that might not be deep enough. Maybe it'll be okay. No, definitely not deep enough. Okay, oh, also while I'm here, see how the water is just where the stems meet the roots. You don't wanna put it in too deep or it'll just rot the plant because it's just sitting in water. I have my bigger jar now and I'm just gonna stick my pothos cuttings in there because they're looking fine. It's been a little while since I cut them, actually. The magic of cinema, it probably only feels like a couple of minutes. And I'm just making sure that the bottom nodes are in the water. All right, it's time for a quick little science lesson about pH. Now, obviously pH does play a role um, in soil when it comes to plants as well, but I feel like it's a little bit more important to understand it if you're just letting something live in water. If you're just popping a plant in water for a short period of time, like it's a cutting and you just want it to sprout roots, or maybe you just want to leave it in there for a couple of months, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if you are intending on keeping that plant in water for good and you want it to actually thrive and do well, I would say it's important to pay just a little bit of attention to pH. I had to get things to show you. I heard a great metaphor that was, if nutrients are the lock, then pH is the key. So having the correct pH balance is actually going to let your plants absorb the nutrients they need. So pH ranges on a scale from zero to 14. Zero being the most acidic and 14 being the most alkaline with seven being neutral. All plants are gonna be a little bit different. Some prefer things a little bit more acidic. Some prefer things a little bit more alkaline. But for the most part, most plants will do well between 5.8 to 6.3. Now I use one of these. It's just a little pH measurement. If you don't want to get one of these, you can get litmus paper, which is a paper which changes color, and it changes color based on how acidic or alkaline the water is. Because when there's no soil, there's no organic matter, there's no microorganisms, and there's no interaction between like water and soil and the minerals that are in the soil. I only use four products because I like to keep things reasonably minimal. I'm not trying to go out and have a whole hydroponic garden. So um, when it comes to fertilizer, this is what I like to use. So it's a two part system. It's not just one. The brand is Growth Technology and it's called Optimum. There's part A and part B. pH up and pH down. And we use these to balance the pH and make sure that it's in the range between the 5.8 and the 6.3. This is not a tutorial video. I just thought it would be something that you guys should be aware of. So when you do put things in water, they still need nutrients if you want them to grow and you can't just use your typical soil fertilizer on your water plants. And the same thing would be if you were to use Lekka. Um, while I'm here, I wanted to let you guys know that I will put up a blog post about this and I'm gonna link all the products that I talked about. So if you're confused about anything, I'll make sure that it is all there in the blog post for you so you can refer back to that when you are transferring things over to water or making some cuttings and putting them in water. So that blog post is gonna be over on my personal journal, which is rachelloss.me and it is hosted by Squarespace. And I did want to say a really big thank you to the lovely folks over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So I use Squarespace to host both of my websites and I actually transitioned my Eat Run Lift blog over to Squarespace like six and a half years now just because when I went and I had a look at the back end of things it was so easy to use. I could drag and drop things, I could customize them myself. They also have a lot of blogging and commenting features that I do enjoy. You can actually duplicate previous posts and work off the same structure to keep things in a similar format and you can connect all your social media your accounts too so if you're someone in the blogging or brand kind of space you know how important it is like if you put something new out you need to let people know otherwise no one will find it and with Squarespace it can actually pull from your social medias and have a feed on your website or you can do the opposite and there's actually a push to share button so when you do put up a new blog post or something new for your audience you can share it across all your other channels too I feel like when it comes to running a business you want to automate as many of these little tasks as possible so if you want to give Squarespace a try jump on over I've got a URL which I'll put on the screen I'll also keep one in the description box for you guys and you can check it out you can set up a free trial 
click around, see how you like it, try out the templates. And then when you're ready to launch, use my URL and you get 10% off your first purchase, whether that's the hosting or your domain name. But thank you again to Squarespace. Now I'm going to go and get ready because it's nearly time for me to go out and have dinner with other Rachel and Erin and Darren. Um, so I'm going to go actually put on a face and maybe get changed. And I'm going to check back with you guys in a couple of days or a couple of weeks and we're going to see how all these water plants are doing. Alright, it's been a week and a half now. I've had this for ages, so I was gonna do like a little look back on things and see how they're going, but obviously this one is fine because he's been in water for ages. The same as the peace lily really. The peace lily's already been in water for a long time. So that one is the peace lily there. Here is our pothos going totally fine and it's got a new leaf coming through at the top here. Here's a Hartley philodendron. I actually put another cutting in this vase as well because I bumped one of the ones that's hanging from that plant wall in the bedroom. I accidentally got caught in a piece of it when I was coming out from the wardrobe and it fell off. So I just stuck it in here as well and everything is going totally fine. There's some new growth on there too, as you can see. And then finally, my little experiment, the Tradescantia tricolor. This one has actually gotten more colorful. So I originally set this one up on the bookshelf in my office, but then I decided to move it to a brighter area. There were a few of the leaves died off, which I expected because this plant had grown for a while in soil and I was transferring it to water and that can happen a little bit sometimes. But other than that, it has had some new growth already. And the cute little one in my office is doing nicely too. Actually, interestingly enough, this little one didn't have any leaves die off yet. Overall, they're all looking good. And I hope it gives you some inspiration of some plants, which you can pot up a little bit differently. I'll catch you guys in my next video.